Hello, my name is Steve Dearden. I've worked at Wush Innovations since 2014. I'm currently working on a large fish passage project on the Fraser River in British Columbia. Today we're going to look at data gathering in fish ladders. These are ideal pinch points to collect data about fish runs and individual fish. After a brief look at some of the more traditional techniques for data gathering, we're going to look at some technology developments that can help automate the process and vastly increase the quantity and quality of the data captured. This will open up more opportunities for effective fisheries management. As migrating fish traverse man-made structures, there's both a need and an opportunity to gather data on those fish to aid in the management and restoration efforts. Some of the obvious data relates to the population, the quantity, the timing, the species, but there's also other data that can be gathered from things like tagging operations and from the physical condition of each fish. Typically, the quantity of data about every fish is limited. Detailed information is only possible if the fish are individually selected out of the migrating population and worked up by hand. Historically, there have been a number of different approaches for data gathering at fish ladders. Some of these are automated, like mechanical counters or resistive counters. Some of them require operator intervention, like a counter window or a sorting box. And some of them require that individual fish are taken out of the migrating population and worked up by hand. This picture shows a specific example of a mechanical counter at the Black River pump station in Washington. In this example, the fish go over a false weir and slide down a chute where they interrupt this device to trigger the small micro switch to give a fish count of adults as they pass upstream. By adding operators, cameras and computers, the process of data gathering can be augmented. An operator sitting in front of the observation window can count the fish manually using a clicker or a keyboard and when he's absent, a camera can also record fish transits for later analysis. In this example, at the Winchester Dam in Roseburg, Oregon, a camera records all the transits and then a computer post-processes the images, adds time of day tags, and then post-analysis is able to do the fish counting and get some size data by using the swim channel reference marks that are below the observation window. Most of these examples have very little impact on the fish. Some of the disadvantages though, are they're very labor intensive and are only as accurate as the capabilities and attention span of the individual observers. The techniques can work well though, but these human issues and physical limitations restrict the amount of data available about the total population and the amount available for each individual fish. In order to get more data than is available from just using mechanical counters or a count window with operators and or cameras, fish can be diverted out of the ladder and then sorted for further workup or even destination processing. For workup, individual fish that are selected out usually through a simple sorting gate on a wetted slide, are anesthetized, handled, and then returned to the ladder after some recovery time. In this sorting box example, on the Clackamas River at a PG&E facility, fish are diverted from the main ladder over a false weir and through one of two sorting boxes where they're observed by the operator and sent to different destinations depending on whether they are hatchery or wild fish. This diagram shows the adult fish handling facility at Bonneville Dam. A grate is used to divert fish from the main ladder. The fish ascend an auxiliary ladder to a holding gallery. 
from the holding gallery they swim over a false weir where operators select individual fish that are diverted into the workup area fish that are not selected or have been worked up and have recovered are then allowed to return to the main ladder to continue their migration getting detail by diverting and selecting individuals from the ladder provides a lot more data on individuals and also affords the opportunity to perform physical marking and collections of samples for DNA analysis. However, it is again labor intensive and therefore there are limitations on how many fish can be worked up. This usually means only certain species or subpopulations are selected. Also, because selection of the fish for workup is performed by human operators, possibly at the start of a shift or a work period, there's a chance that the fish selected may not be representative of the population of interest or conversely may have inherent bias in the selection and therefore not be truly random either. So now let us examine a new approach that collects a lot more data on every fish and also provides the opportunity to select specific fish for further workup. The technique does not suffer from some of the other issues like turbidity that may limit the use of count windows and is fully automated, providing full 24-7 monitoring and data gathering. By combining high-speed cameras, image processing, machine learning and decision making, Wush has developed a system that provides more data about all the fish traversing a system. Now we're going to look in a little more detail as to how the system works. Fish swim over a false weir, are partially dewatered and slide down a gravity slide past a light curtain sensor that activates the camera units. Cameras using both visible and infrared spectra take multiple images of the fish. The infrared images are used to get accurate background separation from the visible light images. The images are analyzed by the image processing computer and based on the analysis, the computer reports information about each fish that can be used for real-time control of say, a sorting gate or archived along with time of day and other data for later use and reporting. This slide shows the images that have been taken of a single fish as it slides through the system from three different sets of cameras. While each fish transit takes less than one second, this is enough time for the computer to process the images as shown. As can be seen here, the computer is able to pick out the outline of the fish, compute the fork length, and by resolving the width of the fish from three different angles simultaneously, also calculate the girth of the fish. Combined with species data, the length and girth can provide a reasonably accurate approximation of weight. With the data collected from each fish, we're then able to teach the system about each fish passing through it. Initially, this technique was used for length and girth and is now being further developed for speciation and fin clip detection. Multiple images are collected and analyzed by hand and using an iterative machine learning technique, algorithms are developed that are used in real time by the image processor. The following diagram shows this process. In the first stage, classification of captured images by trained biologists is used to develop and verify algorithms for the image processor. These are then used for real time processing and can be used to drive decision logic like sorting gates or the Wushfish transport system. Data like pit tag detection and other external signals can be used to augment these sorting criteria. This example shows an installation from 2018 where a scanner was mounted in the fish ladder at the Feather River Hatchery in Oroville, California. A short steep pass and a false weir were installed in the main ladder running into the hatchery. Fish slid through the scanner and continued up the ladder into the spawning room. This short video shows a couple of fish coming out of the scanner after they have been through and been measured. 
A similar installation in 2019 was at the Bonneville Adult Fish Facility. The scanner was placed in the fish bypass. This means that all the fish not selected for manual workup went through the scanner at this particular facility. These two photographs show the scanner being installed last year. On the far side of the scanner on the right hand side is the return pool that connects back to the upper portion of the main ladder. We're now going to look at some of the collected images and the data that was gathered. Here's an image of a fin clipped adult Chinook taken at Bonneville. Another Chinook image. In total, we scanned and measured over 2,500 Chinook during the period that the AFF was operating. Using the criteria provided to us, we were able to identify 234 of those as jacks. Plotting the individual fork lengths for these Chinook over time, we were able to see what we believe to be the transition between spring Chinook populations, which are tightly clustered on the left of the plot, to the summer populations around the beginning of July, which show a lot more variation in fork length. This sockeye image was also representative of those captured at Bonneville last year. Plotting the sockeye data by date also shows some interesting data. It appears that there were two distinct groupings of fish. Since none of these fish were sampled for further analysis, it's not possible to say what these groupings might represent. They may be ocean year class, sex, or subpopulations, e.g. Wenatchee versus Okanagan fish. In the future, it might be interesting as the season progresses to be able to divert fish from either group for further workup to determine what is driving the difference between the two sizes. This image, also taken from Bonneville, is of a coho. Note the few spots on the tail and the tail having a wide base and the white gums which are clearly visible. This image was taken from another installation in the North Puget Sound last year and shows distinct marking of a mature male chum salmon. Going back to the Bonneville study last year, in total we scanned over 7,000 fish and actually saw many different species in addition to the ones that were particularly of interest for the AFF. The kinds of applications we envisage for this scanning technology go beyond just data collection completeness. We're also working with a number of agencies on invasive removal applications, restricting passage at certain ladders to specific species, so only desirable species reach the habitat blocked by the dam. The technology is also an integral part of the Wush Fish Passage system, which enables us to use the size data that we gather using the scanning technology to put the right size fish in the right size tube. So sockeye are directed towards smaller tubes and Chinook and larger fish are directed to the larger tube classes. In summary, we have developed a system with our technology partners that combines recent advances in image processing and machine intelligence in a system that can be used at a typical fish ladder diversion facility to gather far more data on every fish that goes up the ladder. Of course, gathering other information like tissue samples for DNA analysis still requires manual workup However, because the data on each scanned fish is available within one or two seconds, it's possible to utilize the scanning data to drive selection of the few individuals that need manual workup. As an example, fish from a specific size grouping can be selected. The data derived by this scanning technology can also be combined with data from other readers like pit tag readers to provide more fine-grained decision-making and routing at fish ladder facilities.